They were designed to be the best. They met enemies face to face, endured tragedies and enjoyed victories. They went down in history due to the bravery of their crews and deserve to be called Naval Legends. In this episode, Texas, the last dreadnought. In 1906, the British battleship Dreadnought was launched and naval shipbuilding changed forever. Long-range weapons, new optics, fire control systems, steam turbine, cemented armor, this ship became a sensation in naval circles and an appellative for the battleship class. With its appearance, the great naval arms race began. Which country would build the most powerful warship? The New York class, which Texas is a part of, were those the next evolution down the road. They were super dreadnought. They were uh, dreadnought plus. So they had bigger guns than the dreadnought did. They had more armor than the dreadnought did. Texas was launched in May 1912, and in two years it was completely built and fully accepted into American fleet. The USS Texas was a pioneer ship. In its groundbreaking history, it was the first battleship to incorporate anti-aircraft guns, the first ship to count US Marines among its crew, and it is the first ship to become a memorial museum, where it remains today, representing the era of dreadnoughts. Some elements of the Texas's construction can be called quite traditional. For example, dreadnought armoring was made according to the old, distributed scheme, where not only the central part of the hull was covered, but the ends were covered as well. American quality armor was considered to be the best, which was essential for the battleship. The armor gives you the, the, the defensive capability. You are not only able to uh, give out damage uh, via your guns, but you're also able to take damage. So that gives you the ability to stay uh, in the fight longer. In other words, it's like a heavyweight fighter if he's able to take a punch. The USS Texas's armament consisted of five major caliber gun turrets. Two 14-inch guns were housed within each turret, according to a linear sublime scheme. This decision allowed the Texas to use all of its towers for broadside engagements, and two out of the five for axial engagements. The guns were 14 inches. They were the largest uh, 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 rifle, Navy rifles ever uh, floated at that time. Um, and then she had armor to match. She was able to uh, unleash a, a large volley, a 14-inch uh, volley of 10 guns, um, and take that same punch back with her armor. At the time of its build, uh, the strongest warship on the face of the planet. Total displacement is slightly less than 32,000 tons. Length is more than 170 meters. Width is about 33 meters. Keel depth is over nine meters. Armoring, main belt is up to 305 millimeters. Major caliber turret is 356 millimeters. And 305 millimeters for conning tower. Armament, major caliber, five turret units with two guns Mark I on each. Secondary armament, 16 single-barreled Mark VIII guns. Eight multi-purpose artillery Mark X guns. Flak, Browning M2 BMG of 12.7 caliber, 12 and 7 tenths of a millimeter. Anti-aircraft guns. Aviation group, four seaplane Certis soft. Maximum speed is 19 knots. Cruising range, more than 15,000 nautical miles at 10 knots. In 
In order to control the ship's fire, a special ballistic calculator was used, the Range Keeper Mark I, which was considered to be the best among similar devices for a long time. An analog computer mechanism processed the data about the target's position, speed, and atmospheric conditions, and then gave the shooting parameters. Further improvement of navigation systems has been associated with the introduction of radar devices. By the beginning of World War II, Texas was first among the ships of the Atlantic Fleet to receive radar for detecting air targets. This avionics equipment has improved the United States Navy's superiority in fire control systems. One of the traditional solutions for Texas was the installation of a vertical four-cylinder steam engine of triple expansion, an engine for each of two propeller screws. You know, a top speed of maybe 25 miles an hour, or 20, 21 knots, um, but the reliability, the durability, and the efficiency of those engines was remarkable. Uh, these engines, when built, were the most advanced reciprocating engines ever built, um, and they currently are a National Historic Engineering landmark in and of themselves. The history of the battleship Texas began with participation in occupation of the Mexican port of Veracruz in 1914. The ship was on duty in the Gulf Coast and was ready if it needed to support the Marines with fire. After the mission was accomplished, U.S. troops withdrew and the USS Texas engaged in combat training in the Atlantic. From the very beginning, the excellent skills of the gun crew became part of the ship's identity. The USS Texas battleship team has won many accuracy competitions. In April 1917, the United States entered the First World War. Although battle scenes for the USS Texas were limited to a couple of contracts with submarines, American battleships, through their intimidating presence, contributed to the crushing defeat of the Second Reich. After signing the armistice, Texas participated in internment of the German Navy. Germans, under the protection of Union Squadron, proceeded to the main British base at Scarpa Flow. More than 70 battleships and battle cruisers were in one place at the same time. A fascinating, majestic scene. The aging Texas began a peaceful life. In the mid-twenties, it experienced a deep modernization, which took two years. When these countries sat down at the Washington Naval Limitation Treaties, they decided that they would no longer build, or, or they would limit the number of ships they built, they were going to build. Part of the results of that were that the Battleship Texas replacement was scrapped, and the Battleship Texas was uh, need to be upgraded. So between 25 and 27, she was converted from a fuel oil or from a coal fired ship to a fuel oil fired ship. Uh, she had her torpedo tubes removed. As originally built, she could fire torpedoes. Those were removed in that 25 27 refit. Um, she also added some more defense to herself. Um, she had blister tanks, torpedo blister tanks added. All of these things upgraded her, made her a, a new ship for all intents and purposes, and gave her a second life. With the beginning of World War II, Texas was back in the ranks. The USS Texas would be awarded with five combat stars for special merits. The first star was awarded in 1942 for her part in Operation Torch, the Allied landings in French Morocco and Algeria. Texas debut in the role of ship artillery support. Its objectives were to take out the battery at Old Fort of Kasbah and to deter tanks, which tried to attack marines and surrounding roads, on which the pro-fascist Vichy regime French troops feed reinforcements. In addition, the battleship was conducting anti-fascist propaganda. The ship's radio station continuously broadcasted messages from Allied leaders and resistance. She was the only U.S. warship to serve in all theaters of operation. She was involved at the invasion of North Africa, invasion of southern France. She was at D-Day, June 6, 1944, and ongoing. Um, and then she eventually moved over to the Pacific, where she served both Iwo Jima and Okinawa. 
The main event in the USS Texas's career was her participation in opening a second front, the landing of Allied troops in northern France in the summer of 1944. Despite the enormous superiority of the Anglo-American forces at sea and in the air, well-sheltered enemy positions on the ground were keeping Allied troopers landing on the Normandy coast under heavy fire, causing heavy casualties and not allowing them to move forward. Texas was able to come close to the shore and maintain direct fire from all her guns. By that time, Texas's armament was already far behind comparing to the latest battleship's range of fire. But the commander found an original solution to this problem. He flooded part of the torpedo protection rules, tilting the ship and increasing the elevation angle of the guns. This adjustment allowed the USS Texas to strike all of her planned targets. Battleship Texas would fire more than 500 rounds, allowing the Allies were able to gain a foothold on the shore and expand it. After landing on the Normandy coast, Texas took part in capturing Cherbourg. This major port was well protected, in particular with a large gun battery Hamburg. Texas began an artillery duel with it during which it was damaged for the first and last time during its service. A German 240mm shell went straight into the conning tower and destroyed all the unarmored constructions, including the bridge. Steerer died, and five more people were seriously injured. The captain was lucky to survive. But the ship's battle capability was not significantly affected, and the battleship continued its duel with the German battery. Soon, another shell hit the living quarters of ship from the left side of the bow. But it did not explode, and was stuck in the cabin of one of the junior officers. The shell was covered with mattresses, and, after the battle, Lieutenant Sterdevant carefully removed the shell and pulled the faulty fuse. Minesweeper was awarded with a bronze star and the shell was brought back to Texas as a mascot. After battleship Texas's activity in Europe was completed, it was given a small rest before being sent to the Pacific Ocean. She participated in the assault on Iwo Jima and Okinawa, and during preparation for its last short bout in Japan, met the end of the war. It was obvious that the nearly 40-year veteran battleship could not continue its service. Before sending the old battleship to disposition, the United States Navy offered to sell them to the states whose names they bear. The idea was received with great enthusiasm in Texas, and on the 21st of April 1948, the state's namesake battleship of the same name was officially handed over to the authorities of the state of Texas as a ship museum and is a floating museum now. We are open seven days a week. We, we love the public to come out and explore the ship and interact with this artifact, this museum, uh, in, a, in a very personal way. You're able to, to explore the ship and, and hopefully get the experience of what it was like to be aboard the ship. Texas is a truly unique ship. It came into commission before the First World War and is the only United States battleship which took part in the Second World on three major theaters of war in Africa, Europe and the Pacific. Today, this armored giant is standing on eternal parking at the pier in San Jacinto port, personifying the force 
and naval power of the first half of the 20th century.